Hey, what's going on everybody? Jamie Fenn here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you one trick for better color correction and color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Just one trick and it's pretty freaking sweet. Now, I totally understand there are many different ways you can approach color correction and color grading in DaVinci. It really does come down to how the footage was shot and what profiles it was shot in. And it sometimes gets complicated how you should color correct for every different type of video that you may encounter. Today, I'm going to show you one way you can make this all very simple. And I think it's way better than using LUTs and using any other type of technique, because with this method, you are depending on DaVinci's computer algorithm science stuff and it's amazing and it works really well and i've changed up the way i am color correcting my footage now and i definitely love the results that i get from it so with that said let's open up davinci resolve and get started Okay, so real quick before we get started, I just want to put it out there that first of all, this technique is available in the free version. So for all the people that are using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you totally have this option. Second is that I know there is a bunch of different ways DaVinci Resolve allows you to color grade. And thirdly, I think this is better than using a conversion LUT because a conversion LUT can sometimes be deconstructive to your video if your video was shot a specific way, meaning it could clip your highlights or it could clip your shadows and you don't have as much freedom as you do with this technique that I'm going to show you. Whatever method gets your correction and your grade to be what you want it to be as fast as possible is the best option. But I'm just showing you guys this because I believe that this is pretty quick, it's really flexible, and you let DaVinci Resolve do a lot of the work for you. All right, this is a clip with me in the studio, and this is my grade for what I do whenever you guys see me talk to you in my intros. Let's go ahead and turn everything off and pretend like we're starting from scratch. And this could be for any video. You don't have to have a color checker. I do use a color checker for every one of my videos. So if you are interested, I highly recommend getting one. I actually made a video for it. I'll link it at the end of this video. Make sure to check it out. Highly recommended and link is in the description. So I'm going to reset this node. Next is come up here to the open effects. Scroll down to where you see color space transform. Go ahead and drag that on top of that node. Now I know I shot this with a Panasonic GH5 with V-Log. So I'm gonna come up here to the top right hand corner and where it says input color space, I'm going to click on use timeline and scroll down and select Panasonic V gamut. Then I'm going to select the input gamma which is the Panasonic V-Log. Now for my timeline settings, I just work with the default settings that DaVinci Resolve comes with. It's just the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. You can work in 2.2 if you're outputting for the web, but I just typically keep it at 2.4. I think it looks fine the way it is. Maybe I'll change it to 2.2 in the future. So let's go ahead and cancel that. And so with that said, I will leave my output color space to use timeline and my output gamma to use timeline. Let's move on to tone mapping. Now by default, the tone mapping method is DaVinci. Now you have a few options here and I'll put a description for each one of these popped up on the screen right now. So you can go ahead and read it real quick. Let's take a screenshot. From my understanding, what the best options are, at least for me, is to leave it on DaVinci. I do use a lot of media from different cameras a lot of the time, but there are advantages and disadvantages to each one of these options. But for the most part, luminance mapping and DaVinci are the two best options in my opinion. So I'm going to leave that on DaVinci. Next, what I wanna do is come down to the gamut mapping. And you have a few options. You have saturation, compression, and clip. Now what's important is when you're transforming from a wider gamut color space down to a smaller space, you want to select saturation compression. Now here we have a pretty decent grade. The exposure is a little off, but I went ahead and just did the grade for what I would do on the video. And this is what the final grade would look like. Now, if you don't have your input color space or input gamma here, most likely you shot in sRGB or Rec. 709. Now here we go again real quick with a clip that was shot on a Sony a7 III in HLG. Now I'm going to go ahead and quickly just add the color space transform once again. And what I saw on Gerald Undone's channel is that he went up and selected the input color space to Rec. 2020 and then he selected the Rec. 2100 HLG. You can do some corrections after you do the color space transform. You can kind of treat this like a LUT. Now, for example, if I were to continue to do this, I would create a new node and select pretty much my secondaries. I would treat this as a primary grade in some regards. And so say maybe I just wanted to bring down the midtones a little bit 
And also another thing is, is that if you want to do corrections before or after this conversion, I don't think it makes a difference. If you guys know, please comment down below, but I've noticed that it doesn't really have any difference if I do corrections here before or after the transform node. But for example, say maybe I wanted to select the white balance and place that before I can come up here, select my shirt, and then say that would be the primary grade to kind of get it neutralized to look normal. Now, if you wanted to, you could start doing some color grading to create your look. I'm just going to add one of my LUTs and just make it pop. If you guys have any other input and would like to drop it down in the comments, feel free. I would love to hear all about what you guys do with the color space transform. If you've heard about it, if you have not, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.